In this presentation, we will record a transaction related to inventory shrinkage. We're going to be posting the journal entry over here. We're going to be posting that not to the general ledger, but to a quick worksheet. That quick worksheet ideal for seeing the transactions quickly, seeing the accounts affected and the effect on the accounting equation, assets, liabilities, and equity. We see in our trial balance, we got the assets in green, liabilities in orange, capital in blue, and in the dark blue, the revenue and expense accounts. We have in our journal entries, the debits and credits broken out into debit and credit column, as well as credits being represented with brackets. However, in our trial balance, we see debits having uh, non-bracketed numbers or positive for Excel and having bracketed or negative numbers and therefore it'll uh, reduce the number of columns we need, save some formula calculations, and show that we are in balance through the zeros at the bottoms, showing that the debits minus the credits equals zero, therefore debits equal the credits. So this is gonna be our balancing item. This is gonna be where we record the transactions. Here's what we have. We're saying that the ending inventory is 23,000. So what we have so far is the transactions that happened during the period. So we got recording the transaction during the period. Even if we are recording on a perpetual system as we are doing here, we still need to do a physical count at the end of the time period. Why? Because that physical count will tell us whether or not there's spoilage, whether or not there's theft or whatever. We'll call it just random name or just the catch all name of inventory shrinkage. The inventory went down for some reason other than sales. So we're gonna do the cost of goods sold calculation in order to figure out what uh, the inventory would be based on, or, and the cost of goods sold, based on this physical count, and then we'll see if it matches what we have. So in other words, note that all these journal entries have been recorded already, are included in these beginning balance numbers, and we're resulting in cost of goods sold of 5,000 at the end of this process, and we are resulting in merchandise inventory of 27,000. Now note here, of course, that uh, the merchandise inventory we're saying is 23,000. So we'll need to make basically the adjustment to not what we have on the books, but to the physical count. To make that more clear uh, how this process works and to practice the, the uh, calculation of cost of goods sold, which could be used to, to for any component within that calculation, especially within multiple choice questions, we'll run through this calculation. So we're gonna say cost of goods sold in our worksheet down here. And we're gonna say, first, it's gonna start with a beginning balance, beginning inventory, or I'll just call it balance beginning balance in inventory. Now the beginning balance we can't see up here because this is not showing the detail of all the activity that uh, we have posted to uh, the inventory account. Uh, we would find that in the general ledger. We could find that in the GL, but we're not showing the GL here. So I'm gonna give the, in the beginning inventory number, which was the 10,000. So we're gonna say the 10,000 is the beginning inventory. Then it went up by the activity that we did here. So it's the activity during the month, the purchases we made during the month. So we're gonna say purchases. And we see that uh, there's two purchases. Again, I'm looking at the journal entries here. Uh, we could look at the merchandise inventory GL account as well. And that would show us the activity, show us the beginning balances and what we purchased. So here are the two purchases, the 15 and the seven. If we add those up, those will be total purchases for this time period. I'm gonna do that by saying equals in cell J20, pointing to the 15,000 and plus, and then pointing to the seven, then you could just type in here equals uh, E5 plus E14. That's gonna be the 15 plus the seven or the 22. So if this is the beginning balance and we made those purchases and there's no estimates with the purchase, that's what we're actually going to pay in dollars, not in units. Then at any given time or throughout the month, we had the sum of those two, 32,000 available for sale. That's how much we could have sold. We couldn't sell more than that because we don't have more than that. And uh, we could have sold less than that, which we probably did. And that's what we're gonna figure out. So we're gonna call this subtotal then. We're gonna have a subtotal here and we're gonna call it goods available for sale. It could be uh, goods available for sale, inventory available for sale, merchandise inventory available for sale. This is what we had that we could have sold. Now we're gonna add those up. That's gonna be 32,000. I'm gonna use the sum function to do that. Most important calculation 
or function within Excel. So we really want to know that SUM equals SUM. Double click the SUM function here. And I'm just going to highlight from uh, 10,000 to 22 sum J19 colon J20 and enter. So there's the 32,000 there. Okay, so that's what that's what we could have sold throughout the time period. Now what we do typically if it was a periodic system and we would subtract out our physical count, we're going to do the same thing for a perpetual system. We're going to say, hey, there's our physical count. We're going to subtract uh, that out to get what we believe our cost of goods sold should be. So we're, we're going to say this is a physical. Now this we, we kind of shortcutted this just a bit. Note that we're, we're saying here in the problem that the 23,000 is ending inventory in dollars. And obviously in order to get that, we would have to do the physical count in units, make the conversion to dollars. We're not concentrating here on that conversion process. There's different methods that we can account for the inventory, LIFO, FIFO, average specific identification. We'll talk about that um, at a later time. Now we're just focusing on the fact that uh, we're gonna have to, we wanna do that physical count to see that uh, the records are in alignment or make any adjustment needed. So we're gonna say that ending inventory, inventory is that 23,000, 23,000. Therefore, if this is what we had available and this is the ending inventory, the difference then is what we should have sold. The difference is gonna be the cost of goods sold. So we'll subtract that out, the 32,000 minus the 23,000. We're gonna say this equals and point to that 32 in J21 minus that 23 in J22, giving us 9,000 in J23. I'm gonna underline this just for, um, just to make it look nice. I'm gonna to go to the Home tab, Font Group, and we'll select this underline there. And there we have that. Now, if we, if we compare this to what we have in our perpetual system, which should be correct because we recorded the inventory as we went, we recorded the cost of goods sold and the decrease in inventory as we uh, made the sales. So our books should be right, but they're not. Here's the 27,000. We're saying ending inventory according to our account was 23. Here's the cost of goods sold, 5,000. And we're saying that it should be 9,000 in accordance with our cost of goods sold calculation. So there's a, obviously a difference there that we are going to account for. Now, first, you know, why is the difference there? It, if we record it on a perpetual system, it's probably theft, loss, spoilage, something like that. And, uh, and um, so you might think that uh, this cost of goods sold is not really right because it's not a cost of goods sold, it's spoilage. But note that if the, if the amount is going to be minor, that we're typically just going to record it to cost of goods sold uh, because that's the account related to inventory typically. So we are going to make the cost of goods sold this amount, even though part of that 9,000 isn't sales, but loss, spoilage, theft, something of that nature. So we're going to say then that uh, we're going to compare this to the cost of goods sold on books, what we have right now which is going to be this 5,000. So that's the 5,000. And, and this is what we want it to be. This is what we have. We're going to subtract those two out, the 9,000 minus the 5,000 or J23 minus J25, giving us 4,000. That's going to be our adjustment. So note this is similar to what we did when we did an adjusting entry to the uh, supplies account. The supplies is kind of like our our introduction to inventory in some ways. So now we're going to, to make the adjustment in accordance to tie this out to uh, what our physical count was. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna have to increase this account to make it go up to uh, the 9,000. And we're gonna have to decrease this count to make it go down to the 23 by adjusting it 4,000. So cost of goods sold, we'll start with, with merchandise inventory. It's got 27,000, it needs to go down to 23. So it's a debit balance account. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. So we'll copy the merchandise inventory. We will scroll down. We're going to put that on the bottom. So we're going to put that in cell D30, right clicking, pasting, one, two, three. The amount then will be in F30 of credit negative three or 4,000. Then we'll debit something for that same amount. I'm going to do that by saying negative of that number. So negative of that number, 4,000. 
and we could indent then go into the home tab alignment increase indenting then we just need the debit account and the debit account will be cost of goods sold so there's cost of goods sold i'm going to copy the cost of goods sold we will put that in cell d29 right click and paste one two three there's our journal entry let's post it out we're gonna have to do some scrolling back and forth here a bit to post it but it shouldn't be too bad there's the cost of goods sold we're gonna post it right there in j13 in j13 we will say equals scroll down just a bit and point to the 4,000 and then enter and that's gonna make the 5,000 go up by 4,000 to 9,000 matching what we think it should be here in our calculation putting us out of balance here bringing down net income so we're gonna actually reduce net income it's kind of like a loss we're putting we're increasing an expense for the stolen item or the or the lost or spoiled item or something whatever happened to it whatever happened to it it's gone so here's merchandise inventory it's gonna go down so we're gonna scroll back up here's merchandise inventory we're gonna put that in cell J7 so within J7 we will say equals scroll back down we're gonna to point to that 4,000 and enter that's gonna bring the 27,000 down by 4,000 to 23,000 the amount matching what we calculated in our worksheet for ending inventory actually it was given to us that was the part that was given to us in the problem here so we are now matching the physical count and of course we have more reliance on the physical count <laughs> than our perpetual system our perpetual system uh, needs to be adjusted to what we actually physically count the inventory to be in order to account for losses spoilage some random category of all of that called sh inventory shrinkage.